Good morning, Modern Steaders. Let's start building the outdoor kitchen. But first, we gotta let the pigs out on pasture. Good morning, girls. Do you wanna go out in the pasture this morning? You're a little dusty there, Mrs. Pigs. Does that dust feel good? Now you can go have some fresh greens for breakfast. Gotta get everything set up. Luckily we didn't get as much rain as what they were calling for last night. That thunder did end up coming in. We got some good rumbles and a little bit of rain. Nothing too bad. So we're gonna be using these cups to secure the six by sixes to the ground. I couldn't find any of these that are made for six by six rough cut lumber. These are made for six by six finished lumber. So what we have to do is we have to use our router and notch them just on one end so they will receive it. So what I've been doing, I've been using my square as a guide, or four and five eighths up from the bottom Put our square there. And clamp it in place. And by having your guide there, you can get a nice, easy, straight line effortlessly. And fits nicely. Even though these are going to be up off the concrete by like an inch, inch and a half from with the cups, I still want to protect these a little bit better. So what we're using is just some flood oil. It's a, like an outdoor wood protectant for decks. We have it around the homestead, and that's why we're using it. We're using what we have. We just wanna heavily coat this. If there's gonna be an issue with rot or anything, it's gonna happen from the bottom. This will wick up the moisture and it'll start causing it to rot. So if we can prevent that, let's do it. We're going to give it a couple of coats, we'll let it sit in, and then we'll do it again a few times. I don't want this really to penetrate. If you're doing a project like this and you don't have an oil and you don't want to go out and buy it just for this little bit of amount, you can always use used motor oil or motor oil. Now I have an idea on how I want all these trusses to work out. We just gotta figure out if they will. I'm gonna try to arrange them and see how we can get them to work. All right, I think I got this figured out. Here goes nothing. No turning back. All right, let's get this one a shot and we'll see what we can build. Let's see if we can build something out of these. Sorry about all the noise in the background. I don't know if that's the state working on the road or what's going on across the street, but it's pretty noisy. All right, let's see what we get here when we do this. This 
this is going to be the fun part. Now we get to do that nine more times. Making the first two was the hardest and the longest, I guess. We gotta do a little head scratch and figuring everything out. Now that we have our measurements, we can just go ahead and cut all these and then assemble them. I'm just gonna remember all of our measurements. I'm just gonna repeat that step 17 more times and then I'll get back to you. Now we have all of our trusses cut down to length. We got a bunch of scrap wood. We gotta make a bunch of uprights to turn these trusses into trusses we can use. I don't know the full story behind these trusses. All I do know is they were in a dump getting ready to get thrown away. Last year, we saved them from the dump. I couldn't imagine anybody throwing these away and why they would want to. You know, all these cutoff pieces, we're actually gonna save them and we'll be using about half of them for uprights. At least we won't be burning all this wood. We'll be, cut, be able to save half of it. Got all my little short pieces cut off the ends that I don't need. Now we're just gonna kind of keep batching them all together to make it go a little bit quicker. And I'm gonna put a 30 degree cut on all of them and then I'll cut them to length. We need them all at eight and three quarters long from long point. Now that I have one, I can just use that and mark all the other ones. You want to make sure for your template, you always use the same one because they can start growing too much and before you know it, you could be off a quarter of an inch. I had to change shirts. I sweated through that other one. It was making me all itchy. And yes, I have two of these shirts. I know, I wore the other one in yesterday's video. I just wanted to explain myself. We had a few trusses that were junk, but we're gonna cut them apart and use the pieces to make our trusses. We just need to repeat this process 17 more times now.
guys. This has been one of those projects as I'm building it, looking forward to be able to use it more and more the closer we get. This is where we're going to be doing the hand hewn farm three day pig harvesting class in October. It's going to be nice to do all of our canning out here. Just once we have the roof up and the tin all put on it, that's just going to be a huge game changer. Especially on hot days like today and the stuff you want to do, you'll have a place to get out from under the sun. today anyways. They are calling for rain tonight and tomorrow. Keep our fingers crossed we don't get it tomorrow. But just in case we do, let's cover everything up with tarps. They were calling for rain today all day too and we didn't get any. I'm hoping tomorrow is going to be the same. Not quite wide enough. We're hoping it don't rain, but if it does, we're prepared. We'll keep our fingers crossed that it don't rain tomorrow, but if it is, we'll have something else to do. We're keeping our fingers crossed it doesn't rain, but if it does, we'll be doing something else tomorrow. So we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it. It's really helping our channel grow. See you guys later.